Hello, Pastor Stewart here with another midweek Bible study video. These days we are going through some Psalms in the Bible. So each week we are picking a different Psalm, a different kind of Psalm than we've read in the prior weeks and reading uh, what they have to say for us, what the psalmist might have been thinking and feeling at the time. And we are picking specific psalms that are also quoted in the New Testament. So that shows that they had a staying power, that they resonated with the very first Christians. And we'll definitely uh, recognize some of the verses that we'll read tonight. We're reading Psalm chapter 22, and this is a psalm of lament. Now, usually when we think about the book of Psalms, we kind of have this idea that, that most all of them are joyful and happy and praising, and I will enter God's gates with thanksgiving in my heart and make a joyful noise to the Lord, and yay, yay, you know, just kind of really happy, excited Psalms. And there are definitely a lot of those. But of the 150 Psalms, a full third of those Psalms are Psalms of lament. So there are more Psalms of lament than any other specific type of psalm, which is really amazing. And I think it's wonderful because it shows that this psalm book, this song book is honest and authentic to what people were feeling back then, expressing back then, singing about back then, because we have similar feelings and go through uh, hard and good times as well. Now, psalms of lament could be individual or communal. The one we'll read tonight is individual because it's written in the first person singular and says, uh, like, oh God, I'm having this hard time. Uh, you feel far from me, God, and this is what's happening to me. Communal psalms of lament would be about like, uh, my people are hurting, you know, my family is going through hard times. It's about us, it's about a group. But this is an individual. Psalms of lament were used to express feelings during painful times, uh, times that are kind of those in-between times where you're going through the valley of the shadow, and, and you might know and remember that God will, will walk with you and lead you into greener pastures, but you're not there yet, and it's really hard. So these psalms are honest about the tension that people of faith have because we, we believe that God is with us, but sometimes when we go through sad or hard times, we just feel lost, and it's like we don't feel God as much or as close. So these psalms, I think, can really comfort and inspire us, because they echo what we feel sometimes during uh, challenges and during sadness. And as you'll hear tonight, they walk us through and ultimately they give us things to be thankful for, things to praise uh, God about, uh, even during times when we feel uncertain or God feels absent. Now, you'll notice before the verses even start, this psalm again has an inscription. It says that uh, this psalm is, is for the director of music. So in a worship setting, like a church or a synagogue worship setting, uh, whoever the director of music was, and it is set to the tune of Doe of the Morning. Some translations say the tune of the Deer of the Dawn, and that it is a Psalm of David. So that's, that's really interesting to me because our hymnals do the same thing. We might have uh, the same tune, the same music, but we have different hymns that uh, give different words to that music. So that means that when Psalm 22 was written, the music was all, already existed, and the psalmist here, maybe King David or someone uh, who worked for David or was just thinking about David, wrote these words intended to be used with that uh, music that already existed. So as we read through, I want you to imagine what if we sang a hymn in our worship service that sounded like this and that said these things. That would be pretty interesting and very, very honest. Uh, also, as we read through, I want you to think about what themes you can hear and notice in this psalm, what New Testament references that you pick up on, and what might sound uh, familiar uh, as far as like a New Testament reference goes. 
Now, this psalm is not super short. It's not as short as the previous psalms we've read, but it's not too, too long. And there's a lot of emotion in it. It, it starts off in one kind of emotional place and it, it leads and changes and expresses and then builds to kind of another place. So, so I'm just going to read through it and we'll just, we'll just go on the journey with the psalm writer. Okay, so here we go. Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night I am not silent. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. And you, in you, our fathers put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and were saved. In you they trusted and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by men and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in the Lord. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast upon you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me. Strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. Roaring lions tearing their prey open, their mouths wide against me. I, I feel poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is turned to wax and it is melted within me. My strength is dried up like a pot shard, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil men has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. But you, O oh Lord, be not far off. O oh, my strength, come quickly to help me. Deliver my life from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my brothers. In the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel, for he has not despised or disdained the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you will I fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. They who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him, for dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him, those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will pro proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, for he has done it. Wow, that is a big emotional journey that this psalm is on. So for each of the psalms that we have been reading in this series, I've asked you, what do you think the psalmist's condition or feelings or situation was in life when they wrote it, when this was written? Okay, so obviously, really really hard, really scary. He says that bad people have surrounded him. They've attacked him, mocked, insulted him. Uh, he, physically, he can feel it physically in his bones. He can feel, he could, uh, what does he say? He can count his bones. His tongue is dry. His heart is melted. He's poured out. He has no strength. Uh, people are uh, uh, making fun of him uh, with words and insults, shaking their heads. Uh, terrible. And he says, I, I can't not uh, be yours, oh God, because from when I was born, I was yours. So, oh, he is really struggling. But, but then by the end, he says, 
I will praise the Lord and I will say good things about the Lord in my church and I will praise his name among the nations. So just a really amazing uh, journey that this psalmist is on. Okay, so what New Testament references did you hear? Of course, the big one, the obvious one, is in the very first verse. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So, of course, Jesus speaks that from the cross. It's quoted in Matthew 27 and Mark 15. Also, other references. Did you notice verse 18? That is also quoted during the crucifixion in the Gospel of John, chapter 19 when the Roman soldiers have ripped and taken Jesus's clothes. So the Gospel of John quotes verse 18 about um, the suffering one, his garments being uh, taken and divided amongst others who cast lots for his clothing. So John 19 quotes that verse. And there's another interesting uh, verse from here that is quoted also during the crucifixion. It's verse 8. Verse 8 was quoted in Matthew 27 as well by the church leaders, like the, uh, the priests and the scribes and the Pharisees. They quoted verse 8 at Jesus and said, He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? And it really fits uh, the crucifixion scene with a lot of the other themes in these verses, how his um, he was pierced and uh, uh, mocked and abused. Um, so you can definitely see why this, um, he pierced my hands and feet in verse 16. Uh, you can definitely see why this psalm was really uh, in the minds of Jesus and, New, and the, uh, the gospel writers and other New Testament writers as well, because Psalm uh, verse 22 in our psalm today was also quoted in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 12, as a way to talk about what Jesus did and will do after he was killed and after he came back and helped lead people to salvation. So Hebrews 2 quotes um, our verse 22 about Jesus declaring God's name uh, to everyone in the, in the congregation uh, so that they would praise God. Uh, so, Psalm 22, during the New Testament, for good reasons, really closely connected to Jesus's crucifixion. And we see how a lot of the verses and themes play out in the crucifixion scene. So it's no wonder that Jesus had this psalm on his mind as he was dying on the cross. And it, it's probably safe to assume, since Jesus really knew his Bible, that he didn't just speak verse 1 and, and be done with this psalm. He definitely spoke verse 1 out loud, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But I bet he remembered the rest of the psalm and the rest of the verses. Uh, maybe he just couldn't speak any more of it out. One thing about dying from crucifixion is that your rib cage uh, hangs down and uh, presses against your lungs, so you actually can't breathe. And so many people would actually die from asphyxiation uh, on a cross before they died uh, from anything else. So Jesus might not have had the breath in his lungs to to recite the whole rest of the psalm, but he he very well could have had the rest on his mind which is interesting to think about. Let's say Jesus on the cross, he starts quoting verse one, and then he starts quoting the whole rest of the psalm. And I bet it gave him some comfort to think about others who, um, who wrote this and who were suffering and who were under threat and insult and physical pain. But then at the end of the psalm, it turns to uh, a resolution and dedication and saying, like, Nevertheless, I will praise God. So I think it's really neat to think about the rest of the psalm that Jesus might have been quoting in his head and not just verse 1. So if we were to ask, what would Jesus do? We can say that Jesus would think of this psalm during really hard times. So when we have times of sadness or trouble, 
what can this psalm guide us to do? First, I love that it can encourage us to say stuff out loud to God, honestly, what we're feeling, and just say, God, what, have, you, have you abandoned me? I, I, have you just left me for dead? If Jesus can do it, we can do it. If that's how you're feeling, say it out. Shout it out. Better out than in. Get that stuff out. God's big. God can take it. All right? So whatever you're feeling, if it's scared, if it's hurt, if it's weak, if it's abandoned or lonely, shout it in prayer. Cry it out. That's okay. Let this psalm guide you to be honest when you talk to God, when you pray. And then keep reading in the rest of the psalm. It helps us remember God's presence in the past. It encourages us to seek God's presence now. It also encourages us to look around to see where God is at work, what God is, at, is doing, and to remind ourselves that one day we will get through this. And on that good day, we will be giving thanks to God for helping us to get through. A good thing to remember during this crazy, terrible, stupid pandemic time. We will get through this one day. It's hard right now. It's really annoying. But we will get through. And on that day, we will be grateful. To me, as I, as I read it, and maybe you could hear it in my voice out loud, verse 22 is a real turning point in the psalm. The psalmist started in total despair and, and pain and agony emotionally and physically. But then in verse 22, it turns to being resolute and determined. Like the psalmist uh, just decides, I'm not going to let anything or any person get the better of me. They're not going to do it. So the, the psalmist decides right there to push through because he remembers that God will help him because that's what God does. God helps us get through those awful bad times. So then it's, it's so great that by the end of the psalm, the psalmist already starts planning how he will be thankful when it's all said and done. And now he will tell everybody in his church, everybody who will listen, how God helped them get through this terrible, terrible time. Some great inspiration, great ideas for encouragement. So remember Psalm 22. It's good enough for Jesus. It's good enough for you. Okay, so read the whole thing. Uh, Jesus would have known the whole thing. Don't just start at verse one, but read all the way through. Now, for a, a song to sing, a hymn to sing, at the end of every uh, midweek Bible study video during the Psalms, since they were meant to be sung in worship, we are ending every Bible study video during this series with a hymn that is sung. So for this week, I picked the hymn As the Deer. And I picked it for two reasons. Uh, the first reason, I thought of it just uh, from the beginning when I read the inscription because it said uh, that it was to the tune of like deer of the dawn or doe of the morning. So this one popped into my head. And I'll, re I'll sing the, uh, the first stanza and, and I can hear it sung like as a longing, a longing from someone who might feel distant from God who really is having a hard or a sad time and is just longing, panting after God's presence. Like that is our, the heart's desire of this hymn. So I thought it'd be a good hymn for us to end on, As the Deer. <clears throat> As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship Thee. You alone are my strength, my shield. To You alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. Thanks so much. I'll see you next week. Don't stop praying. Don't stop singing, no matter how hard it is. Take care.